So to get us started on this episode, first question came from my guy Brian. And he said, this may be an unpopular opinion, but I think Lamar should sign what's being offered. I support him getting all of his money guaranteed, but that's not how NFL contracts typically work. And I worry that the Watson deal is being used as a baseline when I don't think it should be. Hey, whose problem is that though? Think, think about it, think about it. Whose problem is that? The, the, the market continuously is always reset by the next quarterback that gets the next biggest deal. Um, and, and Watson, he, Browns, and they, they change the game. Better for better, for worse, they change the game, especially with all of them. Anyway, but Lamar is in Deshaun Watson's same line of work in the NFL and playing quarterback. Uh, but Lamar ain't missed no time for none of the, yeah. But, so, yeah, Deshaun Watson and the Browns, they change stuff. But, hey, that's the market. That's the market. And it did, I, I know a lot of people call it a, an, an outlier contract, but it did have an impact because... Deshaun Watson's average per year was 46. That impacted everything because Kyler Murray, he got paid after Deshaun, and his average is 46.1. Now, he ain't get all the guaranteed money now, but he got the higher average. So, again, the market was reset by Deshaun, but let's, let's keep going. He said, it's an outlier deal made by a poor... <laughs> made by a poorly run franchise that was in a desperate situation. The Ravens are neither. So he's saying the Ravens are neither a poorly run franchise and they are not desperate. Uh, he said, I don't think it's a good idea to go into it this season and risk injury without a deal. Lamar will immediately lose leverage if he gets hurt again or underperforms, which I'm not expecting. See, why, why, why would Lamar Jackson, why do we always have to go, or, or, not everybody, but why do a lot of people have to always go to the what ifs? What if he gets hurt? What if he has a bad season? And I know you said you weren't expecting it, but why, why does that even have to be? What ifs? What if the Ravens didn't have Lamar? Where would they be? We, that, we don't have to wonder about a what if with that because we know what it is without Lamar. But anyway, let, let, let's keep it moving. He also said, um, <laughs> let me just end it by saying, I think the Watson deal is one of the worst contracts in NFL history. Um, and he said, uh, not only because of Watson's off-field drama, but because I feel like Lamar would already have been signed long-term if that deal had never been made. They kind of messed things up. Let me know what you think and keep it clean. Appreciate it. See, okay, so then it got a little personal with that one. Cause he, he said, what the Watson deal, one of the worst deals in NFL history. But then he said the why, and the why was personal feelings because he like, hey, if, if that Watson deal would have never happened, then Lamar Jackson, he would have been signed already. Um, Cause the Watson deal complicates stuff, and it does complicate stuff. But it, for, for Lamar, it complicates stuff in a great way. Cause he like, hey, Watson got all that. Hey, Kyler got all that. Hey, what's up with me? But at the same time, with that, it's like for for me, it, when you think about it, um, think about it. If you you got hired at a job, and you got hired at this job four or five years ago, so you've been working there for a little while. So you've been working at a job for like four or five years. But for those first four or five years while you're working that job, you are criminally underpaid. And, and you get it because that's the way that the, the contract that you set up with this company, that's the way that it works. But you are criminally underpaid for everything that you have to do. And for you to have to be the leader for that company in a couple of different categories and one of them you should not be the leader for consistently but you have been the leader for consistently you having to do so much for your company you are when it's time for you to get a raise you are not just going to take hey here you go here's your raise there you go take it you're not just going to take the first raise that they give you no you, you're going to want to negotiate especially if they give you a raise to where it's like hold up what's this where's the rest and you, you, and especially if you see somebody else who has gotten into some trouble, who's in your same line of work, but they got into some trouble, and and they get a crazy boatload of money. So it's almost like your company, the company that you work for, is rewarding for bad behavior, but you've been on good behavior, but you haven't been rewarded yet. No, you, you're gonna look at that and be like, hold up now, let let, let me get taken care of too, but. With, even without the whole Deshaun Watson thing, when it comes to you negotiating with your company, y'all are going to go back and forth. 
and it's gonna go back and forth until you come to an agreement on something that you feel is fair for you and they and they're gonna be push and pull from both sides that your company that you work for they may not feel like hey we may not feel like you're worth that we may not want to give that to you we may not want to even guarantee that to you so that could happen but then so ho hopefully and hopefully for your company and hopefully for uh, everybody who likes watching your company hopefully you don't end up going to a different company but bi business happens we know business happens business can get so ugly and this is why I, I i just i do not want it to get to the franchise tag man because if it gets to the franchise tag stuff can get really really nasty really really nasty so hopefully the ravens and lamar they can come to an agreement that's good um they can come to an agreement so this whole contract thing it can be in the past but i don't know that that clock is ticking yeah this feels like a dream Team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of questions from y'all. And before we get into this, I got to give a special shout out to the newest team, keep it clean patrons, Darrell and Mike C. Appreciate y'all and, and all the patrons and really just everybody. Y'all been showing insane amounts of support every single video, every single day. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. When we did that video titled the other day, y'all really need to chill out. Y'all go, y'all can chill out. Y'all can relax a little bit, but we appreciate it. Um, we got some great questions from some patrons, but let, let's get into this first one. And it came from my guy, Raymond, uh, and he's been a patron for a couple days. So he's a new Team Keep It Clean patron. He said, Raven, do you think our wide receivers can handle the weight we are putting on them? He said, me, I think they can. What is your take on this? Hey, they ain't got no choice but to. They ain't got no choice but to. It's, it's up to them now to, to show the world like, hey, we here and, and we ready for this. So you got Bateman, Demarcus Robinson, Prochet whenever he gets back, Tyler Wallace whenever he gets back, Devin DuVernay, uh, possibly Bridges, possibly Polk. There were rumors that Ravens looking at some other guys too, we'll see. But hey, so it, it's put up a shut up time. So if they, whether they can handle it or not, we're gonna see, we're gonna see real, real soon. So it's important for Lamar to give them opportunities. It's important for Harbaugh and Roman to give them opportunities and it's important for them when they get opportunities to make the most of it to show that they can handle that weight next question also came from a patron my guy uh jakey on p he said yo. he said yo engraven i'm not a fan of the ravens but i enjoy the content and uh the few ravens players i like tighten up engraven and keep up the good work may god bless you appreciate that man see that's what i'm talking about man y'all just y'all showing crazy support like that man Jake Young said he ain't, he ain't even a fan of the Ravens. He's a fan of the Titans, but still became a, a, a patron. So I, I appreciate that a lot, man. So thank you. Next question. Well, okay, I guess it looks like a comment came from the new patron, Mike C. He said, I, I follow the channel daily. Uh, it's awesome. I have been trying to become a patron for a while now. Oh, you're, oh he said he's a season ticket holder uh, living in, in Baltimore, uh, but got property down in Florida. Hey, that's what's up, man. And he said, glad I can support the channel. Thank you, man. Thank you. That, that, that's what's up, man. And, and hopefully with you being a season ticket holder, you can go lose your voice a bunch of times at these games because you'll be cheering so much for the Ravens to get back to that home field advantage that they used to have and they could go undefeated at home this year. What if they went undefeated at, at home and on the road this year and they did do that whole 20 and no, I know it ain't gonna happen, but appreciate you, Mike. Thank you, man. Next question also came from a patron, my guy TJ. He said, yo, Engraven, thanks for the shout out. <laughs> Say you made my kids think I was famous. Hey, none of us are famous, but you, you're special, man. And your, your kids should definitely know that you are special. And we over here at Team Keep It Clean, we appreciate you. So shout out to you. Shout out to your kids, too. Shout out to your whole family, man. Uh, he said they loved it. Thank you. And he said to the point, Isaiah Likely, in your voice. Woo, let's go. But <laughs> he said, doesn't he look like a reincarnate? Re oh, my goodness. This, this is crazy, man. He says, doesn't he look like a reincarnated Anquan Bolden? What's funny? 
talking to my guy JT the other. He he said he ain't call he ain't call him reincarnated or anything, but he said he reminds him of Anquan Bolden. We were just having this conversation yesterday or the day before yesterday, and he said the exact same thing. I haven't seen it yet, but I haven't also haven't really been looking for it yet either. Um, but sometimes when you're not even looking for things, they just show up. Like how J.K. reminded me of Ray Rice. Like that dude. I mean, but he got he did have a big 27 on his back, so that helped. But I'm gonna start looking for that and see. But he said, "Yikes! Can you say Super Bowl victory?" <laughs> hey, I hope so. He said he moves like a dog receiver. I can see him making a game-winning touchdown catch in this year's Super Bowl. God bless the family and team. Keep it clean. What you think? Hey, trust me. I, I don't think anybody would be mad at that at all. If that ended up happening. Yeah, we'd all be celebrating. Next question came from my boy Philip, who's also a patron. And all these questions have been from patrons so far. Appreciate y'all. He said, I know I already mentioned him, and EDC probably won't pick him up if he's cut. But the speedy Scotty Miller down in Tampa is now being reported that his roster spot is in jeopardy due to the addition of Julio Jones. Your thoughts? I mean, I, Scotty Miller, it's cool. Yeah, he's speedy wide receiver. Um... I mean, we down two of our receivers now anyway. With I mean, who knows how long Prochet going to be out for? Um, who knows how long Tylen Wallace going to be out for? Ravens, there was that rumor going around. I don't know if it's true or not, but that rumor that they were interested in um, the receiver from the Cardinals who oh, who was battling back and forth with Brandon Stevens, uh, Andy Isabella. So I guess they just really like his heart. They like, man, he really taking uh Brandon Brandon Stevens to town, man. So we 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 like this guy. Uh but I, I don't know if it's true or not. But um if it is true, then that would mean that the Ravens would be looking for like a, a little slot shifty type of receiver uh who could stretch the field. So I mean, hey just you know what? Oh uh, to me it I don't think it would really move the needle, but with, with, with Ravens and their receivers I guess right now, at this point of the season, the move in the needle is going to really have to come from how they're used. That, that's going to be the biggest needle mover that there can be. How these guys are used, if they're placed in position to succeed, if the, the coaching staff and Lamar Jackson, and then the receivers again, like we talked about, they're making the most of their chances. If all of those things happen, it, it, it takes everybody. It takes a village. You know how they say, oh, it takes a village to raise a child. It takes a Ravens village to raise, raise a receiver. So it's important that the village all get everybody on point, all get everybody involved, all get everybody that gets played to their strengths, and then they can make it happen. Next question came from one of the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons. I've got my guy Darrell. He said, appreciate everything you do and your hard work. Always showing love and energy, always positive. Appreciate that, Darrell. We, we, we don't do nothing over here, though. All we're doing is talking. That's all we're doing. All we're doing is talking and putting it online. That's it. I appreciate it. He said, I don't know if it's just me, but does Kyle Hamilton look lost out there? The quickness and how much he takes up on the field is great. It's a lot of little things he has to get better at. But to keep Chuck Clark here for maybe one or two years is key. I hope we don't trade him, but that's all I got. Everybody stay safe, blessed, peace, and love. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, with, with Chuck Clark, well, the reason I wanted to keep him is just for depth. Um, for, for the Ravens to have more quality depth and just more... Um, more... Um, options on defense more versatility on defense uh but yeah Kyle Ham I mean he, look, you gotta remember we, we we have to remember and I know he's a first round pick so I know that that puts a lot of pressure on that puts a lot of both pressure and expectations on him um but we gotta remember he's literally a rookie he's a rookie that's that has played in two maybe like as of now maybe like four quarters Maybe four and a half quarters. He hasn't played very long. That like he's he's played in in a little over a game's worth of a game. That's how long he's played for. So he's gonna be looking lost out there. It's like when when you start a new job, even if you got a promotion. So you've been doing you've been in your line of work for a while, but you got a promotion. So now with the promotion, you like looking a little bit lost. You you do you're doing some nice stuff for your company, but there's some other times when you're looking kind of lost. So but people are gonna understand. Hey. Yeah, he has been in this line of work for a while, but he's new to this field. He's new to this level of it. So it's going to be in a, an adjusting period. So that's all it is with Kyle Hamilton. Um, I know he got to clean up on the tackling a little bit. Um, and he, the pursuit is good, though. The pursuit is there. Um, 
and just just making smaller decisions. I know he left the running back wide open, but again, it was just instincts. It was instincts. It looked like Trace McSorley was running to the end zone. Kyler, Kyler, I was about to say Kyler Murray. Kyle Hamilton was trying to step up, make the stop. That's it. It's just instincts. So I think he'll be fine in the long run. But we got to remember that it's still super, super early. Next question. Um, well, I guess really more so a comment came from my guy Yahoo. Uh, he said that he has two Ravens versus Jets tickets for sale. Um, for September 11th at Jet Stadium in section 134 uh, in row 13. So really good seats. They on sale for $300 each. So if, if y'all want that, y'all can let me know and I can let him, only if you're serious though. None of the play play stuff. Uh, and he also said he has Ravens Dolphins, uh, so the home opener on September 18th in section 129 row 5. So again, really good seats. Uh, right behind the Ravens bench that he's selling those for 320 each so 320 dollars each so you can let him know uh, or you can let me know and I'll refer you to him but only if you you're serious so y'all y'all let me know conspiracy theory next question came from my guy d3 this should be a lot of fun he said what's good bro hope the family is doing well I have an observation that I would like your opinion on remember how Ozzy beating Alabama Allen will look to draft several players from that university once EDC took the reins he's drafted from Oklahoma with Andrews and Brown well, now nah, Andrews was uh, was Ozzy too, uh, but anyway, he said. Yet many of our players and free agents seem to be from Florida. <laughs> but anyway, he said last year we drafted Bateman from Georgia, even though he played in Minnesota. We just signed Demarcus Robinson, who played in Florida. Yeah, he was a Gator, I believe, but is from Georgia too. My question is: Do you think that there will be a shift in our wide receiver selection process, which will focus on wide receivers and players from the South? Duvernay and Prochet are from Texas. Thank you for your thoughts and observations. Keep up the great work. <laughs> hey, you talking about the Florida Ravens now, so you know I'm on board with that all day, man. But anyway, he said, thank you for your thoughts and observations. Keep up the great work. And whether you know it or not, your optimism and non-bias takes are greatly appreciated. Thank you for not trying to push a narrative, but, you <laughs> but using common sense. Hey. <laughs> I don't know if it's always common sense up here. Man. So I might have to disagree, give you some pushback on that one. But I appreciate you, man. Um, could it be a shift in, in, in something like that? In, in, in the, the receivers that are picked? Maybe. Because um, we know, like, uh, Florida, Texas, oh, California, too. They, they and, and not saying that other states aren't, but you know how big those, like, high school games be? They be, like, out of this world, man. So it starts there. But then, of course, in, with the colleges and stuff, I mean, well, they got some of the, the biggest, most best colleges or whatever. But, I mean, I don't know, man. I, 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 I don't know. We, we'll see. I guess we got to wait and see if this strategy continues. Um, I would like it, though. I wouldn't be mad at it at all. And and you talked about me being non-biased. Well, hey, when it comes to Florida Ravens, that bias, it'll creep in there. That's what I'm trying to get. Hey, Shamar, do your thing. And then of course Shamar like got a got a special place in my heart for Shamar because he um just the way how he interacted with Carter at training camp, him, Pepe, Jalen, Rashad Bateman. Um, I, I really I, I appreciate again, like I said, somebody do something for me, cool, whatever, that's fine, and I appreciate it, but you, if it's something that's done for Carter, then it, I just appreciate it way more. And the fact that those four gentlemen, they, they the way they interacted with Carter, um, it just, I, I, I loved it. And it just, it made me root for them that much more. So it, it was just super cool to see. Um, but yeah, I, I won't have any problem. If it's gonna be Florida Ravens, let's go EDC. Next question came from Oreo Cookie. Well, that, that would be good right now with some milk and then, yeah. anyway, he said, hey, Raven, getting ready to start junior year of high school. Hey, congrats, hey, I hope you do really good. And maybe you can do good enough to where you can get ahead for next year. So next year will be even easier for you. But anyway, he said, I was watching 410 Sports Talk. And one of them brought up how Lamar was not smiling in the pictures with Hollywood Brown. And barely signed his jersey. And I would like to know your thoughts. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Hey, I hope you have a, a great rest of your day, though. I don't think it's a big deal. I, I, think, <laughs> I think Lamar is just chilling. He even posted the picture of him and Hollywood doing the, the jersey exchange. And he said this whole jersey swap stuff is weird. Um, but, I don't know, I guess uh, he, he, he might have been thinking real quick, oh, what it could have been with Hollywood still on the squad. It, it didn't seem weird to me at all. It didn't seem awkward. It just seemed like he was just saying what's up to Hollywood. Hollywood was saying what's up to really all the guys. 
and and it was just all love. So I, I didn't take anything from it. I didn't take like, oh man, Lamar was upset or Hollywood was upset. No, I ain't take nothing from it. Just boys seeing each other. They both work for different companies now. And it's like you, you seeing one of your boys that you used to be in the same department with, but now he just changed departments. So he changed companies or whatnot. He got a different job somewhere else. And you just saying what's up to him. Next question came from my guy, Constantino. He said, hope everything is good with you and the family. Appreciate it. Huntley and now Brown as backup quarterbacks are looking good. By experience, Huntley is still the number one backup. I like what I see in Brown. We know that the Ravens have excellent scouts and fine gems and undrafted free agents. I believe they will keep three quarterbacks on the 53. Ooh. I don't think so, but hey, let's see what else you got to say. He said, especially, oh. <laughs> he said, especially if Lamar has not signed, but also because of the quality of the two backup QBs. What are your comments? Thank you. Hey, appreciate it. Ah, uh, no, I mean, Lamar's under contract. We, we, we got to remember that. Lamar is under contract. So he, I would only expect them to keep, um, to keep three if he held out. So if he was like, you know what, no, I'm not going to play, then I would, okay, maybe they keep three. But I, I don't expect them to, because I expect them to play, and I don't expect, um, I don't expect, um, I don't expect them to keep three QBs on the roster. I think it's just going to be Hunt, and it's just going to be, um, and Lamar, and, and, and that's it. And I think, um, Anthony Brown will go on a practice squad. Um... That'd be cool if somebody got him off the practice squad and he could start, but I know that that's probably not going to happen. That, that, that's, a, that's a long shot. Um, but, yeah, keeping three quarterbacks, no. I, I don't think they do that, especially with just how – it's like you got 53 players, but at the same time it's like the roster is so small and you like – every spot counts that much more, especially, too, because you can only have 46 active on game day. And I think, how, I forgot how I worked with the practice squad call-ups, man. I think you can call up two from the practice squad. Uh, no, you, I, I don't even remember, man. But the roster decisions are tight. The rosters are tight. So keeping three quarterbacks, I don't think Ravens really have that flexibility like that. So we were just talking about three quarterbacks. Now let's go to one quarterback, you know, a quarterback who hopefully can change his name to number one after this year. I mean, change his jersey to number one after this year. Anyway. He said, hey, Graven, I hope you and the family have been blessed in my own personal opinion. Oh, it came from my guy, Caleb. He said, in my own personal opinion, I believe Lamar Jackson does not deserve a fully guaranteed deal because he has not been able to prove he can play in the playoffs like he can in the regular season. I'm a huge Ravens fan for over 10 years and will be at the Pats vs. Ravens game. Hey, that should be a lot of fun. He said, I just don't think Lamar has proved a fully guaranteed deal. You know what, Caleb? I respect your opinion on that, and I respect your uh, your willingness to share that too. Um, so, what what would be your what kind of deal does he deserve? What kind of deal would you say Lamar Jackson does deserve? Um, what, what what would be your plan of action? To me, I think he deserves it. Reason being, and no, I, I get what you're saying about the playoffs. Trust me, I do. But. The, the, the playoff conversation is even a playoff conversation uh, because of Lamar Jackson. No Lamar Jackson, I mean, again, you've seen it for yourself. You, you say you've been a fan for over uh, 10 years. So for over 10 years, it's 2022. Okay, that will put you right. Yeah, you saw the Super Bowl. So the Ravens Super Bowl in 2013. Um, and then the following year, no playoffs. No playoffs. They went 8-8. Eight and eight. The year after that, they did make the playoffs and they won a playoff game. So I was like, yeah, let's go. 2014, they did it. It was like, yes. 15, no playoffs. But everybody was hurt. 16, no playoffs. 17, no playoffs. 18, it was getting ready to be no playoffs. But then, what happened? The guy who I feel like should get a guaranteed deal, he happened. And he happened in 2018. He happened in 2019. He happened in 2020. And then 2021, yeah, everybody got hurt, including him. So, I mean... The reason that I feel like Lamar should get a guaranteed deal with the Ravens is because, in my opinion, if he's healthy, he fully guarantees that you are going to even make the playoffs. Um, now, once you get there, yeah, he got he got some stepping up that he got to do. He certainly does. But everybody does. Everybody certainly does. And while he hasn't been the only reason that the Ravens have been getting to the playoffs, because he, he does not play lights out every single game. He doesn't. We know that. We get that. There are games where he will be off. There are games that he has that will be ugly. It's happened before. It's probably going to happen in the future, too. 
It happens. It's part of being a quarterback. But he is the biggest reason uh, for the Ravens even being able to talk about the playoffs. So that money should be guaranteed. Next question came from T. Franklin. He said, hey, was Isaiah likely showing promising skills as a vertical threat? And some of the other rookies too. Do you still think we need to go find or go get that wide receiver one? And thanks for all that you do. I uh, pray you and the family are well. Oh yeah, we're doing real good, man. I I mean, at this point, it's, it's pretty much, it's kind of too late. I mean, it, it got to be something homegrown, at least this year, unless the Ravens just pull something out of the hat. But no, it, it's got to be something homegrown this year um, as far as wide receiver one. And, and again, the expectation is that Rashad Bateman is that. Um, but it's, for me, it's not, even, it's not even necessarily about another uh, wide receiver one, but just a, another legitimate weapon on the outside for Lamar Jackson. Rashad Bateman getting taken out of the game. Who else gonna step up? Mark Andrews. Hey, Mark Andrews getting taken out, taken out of the game. Who else gonna step up? That's my big thing. Who else is gonna step up? Hopefully Isaiah Likely can be that. Hopefully Demarcus Robinson he can contribute. Approach just everybody, and that's been my biggest thing. Just really having legitimate weapons and using those legitimate weapons, not just having them, because you could have them and they could just be sitting there. You could be looking like, oh. But if you actually use them, that's a whole other story. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Shout out to Graven.